Hi folks, thanks for joining me today on Dragon's Teeth Gaming Channel and welcome also to our new subscribers. Thanks very much for signing up. So, I'm outdoor again today because I'm going to be doing some spraying, undercoating my fantasy figures. Uh, before I get onto that, I just thought I'd show you how I'm setting this up. I have uh, this rather larger base, which I guess is used for sculpting or crafting. I find that's nice, it just lifts things up off the table a little bit and I can change the angle of this as well. And on top of that I'm going to put, I think these are called Lazy Susans, I'm not really sure. But basically it's a turntable. So I'll have that on top of there and that's nice because then it means I don't have to move around the table to spray, I can just rotate the figures. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put some newspaper on these just to cover them up. Okay, so we've got that done. The question now is, what am I spraying? Well, three things. My Wardle skeletons, which I've assembled, or I've assembled about half of them. My 10mm excellent miniatures for the Warmaster Revolutions game. And also my general fantasy figures, some of which I bought at the Heraldwood show recently, other ones I bought online. I do have another batch arriving on eBay any day now, but uh, I wanted to crack into these and get these done today. So let's start with the 28mm skeletons. So I put these together the other day. I actually did them in two lots of six because one thing I found with these is they're quite fiddly. You are basically assembling the whole figure and I would advise you work from the ground up. So get your bases sorted and then the feet go first. And as you might be able to see here, the feet have this sort of bar between them. I very much advise that you leave that in place because it really helps with lining up the figure with the feet. There are small pegs on the end of the legs and small holes in the feet and if you keep that bar in place they line up pretty easily. Of course you can cut the bar away after. So I built them from the feet up. As you can see we've got the base, the feet, the legs go in and then the ribs. I did the arms separately, so I did the left arm on each figure and then I did the right arm, so I was really sure that the glue had dried before I moved on to the other side, because at first I did try putting two arms on one figure and of course when I adjusted one I knocked the other one and that moved. And then the head or the skull sits on top, I have to say these skulls have got some great expressions, really a lot of character in these figures. though. As I said at the start, I did find them extremely fiddly. It was kind of strange because some parts just fitted in straight away first go and other parts I really had to wiggle around a little bit. But in a way this worked in my favour because particularly with some of the heads it meant that they went on at slightly odd angles. So I don't know how anatomically correct they are but to me that makes them look more menacing. I mean, it almost looks on some of them like the neck is broken or something like that. So I'm, I'm really pleased with the way they turned out. I've not put the shields on yet. The weapons are in, but I'm going to paint the shields up first and paint the figures first before I attach the shields. And I think with the second batch of these, because there's 24 in the set, I'm going to plunder the spares box for some extra weapons as well. See if we can get some double-handed axes, that kind of thing in there. So from 28mm we go to 10mm and my vampire counts. These as you may remember came from excellent miniatures and they're 3D printed. Again really full of character even at this scale. Uh, I had to cut away some of the surrounding, I, I call it sprue but that's probably not the right name for what you get from a printer. So I had to clean them up a little bit and what I've done for ease of painting as you can see here, I've used double sided tape and I've put them on those uh, what I call lolly sticks that I got recently from Hobbycraft. So that should make undercoating and painting a lot easier. And then we go back to 28mm for my character figures for my fantasy skirmish game. I think you've seen all these before, maybe with the exception of one, because I did see uh, a very nice sort of Japanese type demon, I suppose you call it, the other day, and I had to get that as well. But you've seen the spider and the, uh, the wizard and the wagon and so on. 
So, the next question is, what colour am I going to use to undercoat? Well, for the 28mm, I like to use black. For the 10mm, I'm probably going to use white, because a lot of them are skeletons, and also I'm a bit worried that black will obscure a lot of the detail when I'm painting, whereas white should help everything stand out. And of course, I can put a wash and everything else on. So, now, the other thing I found is, the other day I bought a few tins of undercoats, and black, some white, uh, and some varnish stuff and they have simply disappeared <laughs> I can't find them anywhere at the moment because we're organising the Innsmouth Literary Convention which takes place in well just barely two weeks time the house is full of boxes we've got posters, programmes, t-shirt, merchandise, books all sorts of stuff we're getting ready for the event so those cans are probably in one of the 85 boxes that are piled around the house at the moment uh, but I did manage to dig out a couple of uh, other tins from the shed. So I hope I've got enough here to get me through all of these figures today. I have already done some of the earlier figures that I bought the first batch of fantasy figures, as you can see here. So let's repeat the same process with our 28mm skeletons. So as you can see, I've mounted these on the double-sided tape on one of those lolly sticks as well. Um, I find with larger figures it's not too bad, but these are quite flimsy figures in a sense, <laughs> there's not much meat on them I suppose. Uh, I sometimes find if you're spraying you can actually knock the figure over. But this also allows for much better handling, I don't have to touch the figure at all. So let's start with our black spray. So as I say the nice thing with the turntable here is I can very easily get access to every side of the figure, every angle. And there we go. So on to our 28mm skirmish figures. We've got the female ranger, the wizard and the, uh, the sort of demon there. And again I've mounted them on the sticks. We've got our large mummy spider, isn't she cute? And then we've got the little baby ones on the stick as well. Uh, we were talking about spiders the other day, funny enough, in one of my classes in arachnophobia. And one of the ladies was saying, of course, you can get therapy and treatment to overcome arachnophobia. And she said that the final thing they have you do is to eat a live spider. Is that real? I sort of said to her, you're not really selling it to me. <laughs> anyway, these little plastic ones I can handle, so no need to eat any of those. And we've got that prison car or prison wagon as well, which I've now glued together. That went together really easily. No cleanup or anything required on that. So let's get that done as well. Alright, as I feared, my black has just run out on there, so I'm just going to switch to grey. Not ideal, but at least it means I'll get them undercoated today. Okay, so that's those figures done. Ideally, I would have liked to have those in black, particularly the spiders, but uh, never mind, at least they're undercoated and they're ready for painting. So let's finish with the 10 mils. Ideally, I would have liked to have done these white, as I said, but, uh, you know, needs must and all that. So we've got some units of zombies, skeletons, and I think they're like sort of uh, ghosts or spectres, they're called. We've got some character figures, the necromancer, the hero, the standard bearer. And again, I can't get over just the amount of detail you get at this scale. That's going to make painting a lot easier. So, back to the grey again. And there we go, just about enough in that tin to do those, just scrape through. 
Uh, actually, that's not too bad. It's a fairly light grey, so it's not quite the white I wanted, but uh, you know, that'll give me a decent base to start my painting on. So that's the undercoating done. Uh, to be honest, I spent more time looking for those bloody spray cans than I did doing the actual spraying. Speaking of which, do you have any preference when it comes to sprays for undercoating? I tend to use just generic spray cans online or from DIY shops, that kind of thing. I normally go for the cheapest one. Uh, I've never found a lot of difference in quality. Maybe with some of the cheaper brands you get a bit more spatter and everything else. But a spray can is a spray can pretty much, at least in my experience. But I would be interested if you have any particular recommendations. So that's it for today. Thanks again for joining me. And as always, if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, please do let me know. Thanks if you already have subscribed. And if you haven't, please click like, share and the subscribe button below. It really helps the channel to grow. I'll see you next time.